then we have uh, question two a student investigating the cooling of a water under different conditions so the question two is actually uh, related to block two which is thermal physics a student investigate the cooling of a water under different condition figure 2.1 shows up greater she uses so she clamps a thermometer and that is a more accurate way like thermometer bulb should not touch the base of the container or the wall of container otherwise it can uh, it will not determine the accurate temperature of the water a thermometer in figure 2.2 shows a room temperature at the beginning of experiment record the room temperature so what is the room temperature you can use screen annotation to state the value here what is the room temperature and write it in this part so it is 21 degrees centigrade the room temperature is 21 then as you can see roughly in this one as uh, the previous it was mentioning like we measure the initial and final temperature and determine the rate of cooling. So they are doing the same thing here. So what student did, as I mentioned, it is not wrong, but to get a more prominent result, we prefer to have more readings rather than having initial and final reading. So student pours 200 cm cube of a hot water into a beaker. She records the temperature of a hot water. She immediately start the stopwatch. And after 180 seconds, which is three minutes, she measured the temperature Theta shown in the thermometer, her temperature readings are shown in table 2.1. Complete the time column and the column heading for table uh, in 2.1. So time is in second good and temperature in degree centigrade. Then the time column we have to complete as well. So what I will write because when we start the experiment, time is zero. And when we measure the final temperature, the time is 180. Second, so zero and one eighty, we have to write here because we started when time is zero and we stop at time is equals to one eighty seconds. Then we have to determine, calculate the drop in temperature between zero to one eighty seconds. So how much the temperature drop from zero to one eighty seconds? What is the change in the temperature or drop in temperature or difference in temperature? from 85 to 69. You can use a screen annotation to write here. You, but whenever you're writing any number or a value, it should be with units. So it will be 16 degree. Then we have to calculate a rate of cooling R1. So how to calculate a rate of cooling R1? They will give the temp formula that delta theta one, which was 16, and divided by time. So 16 divided by time. How much is the time interval? So 0 to 180 second, that is 180. So 16 divided by 180. What's the answer when 16 is divided by 180? <clears throat> 0 0.08. And then the unit is also important because unit of temperature change is degree centigrade and unit of time is second. So it is degree centigrade per second. So whenever you're writing the values, you should include a unit as well. Then student pour 150 cm cube of a hot water and she add 50 cm cube of a cold water. She repeat the timing and temperature, complete the column heading, that's done. Then for time also zero and 180. Now what is the temperature change from 69 to 57? So from 69 to 57, that is 12 degree change in temperature. And then the next part, we have to calculate a rate of cooling. So it will be 12 divided by 180. So 12 divided by 180, what's the answer for this? 0 0.0. 6 0 0.066 degree centigrade per second good then a student suggests that the average rate of a cooling r depends on the difference t between the temperature of a water at time t is equals to zero and room temperature 
So student is saying that the rate of the cooling depends on the temperature of the water and the room temperature, initial temperature of the water and room temperature. So calculate D1. How to calculate D1? What is D1? D1 is a difference. As you can see, D, what is D? It is a temperature difference between temperature of the water at time zero and the room temperature. So if we did the first experiment, in the first experiment, the initial temperature was 85. And what was the room temperature? 21. So it will be 85 minus 21. So this will be 85, 85 minus 21. That is equals to 64 and degree centigrade. And the second experiment was done. 69 was the initial temperature. So 69 was the initial temperature and room temperature is 21. So when we take a difference 69 minus 21, that's equal to 48 degree centigrade. Now, write a conclusion about a relation between R and D. Like what is the relation between R and D? See, when D is 64, what was the rate of the cooling which we calculated? The first one 0 0.088 degree centigrade per second. When the second experiment, the rate of the cooling was 0 0.0. 66 degree centigrade per second. So what it shows, it shows the rate of the cooling is directly proportional or proportional to D. Like the rate of the cooling increases as the value of the D increase. So write a conclusion about the relation between R and D. That, because the student suggests that the rate of the cooling depends on the difference between the like rate of the cooling depends on difference between the temperature of the water in the beginning and the room temperature. So if there's a greater difference between the temperature of the water and the room temperature, the rate of the cooling is higher. So what we can say uh, about the conclusion, we can say that the conclusion matches the result And how the con conclusion matched the result justification is that, that in the first experiment, when the difference in the temperature is 64, the rate of the cooling is 0 0.088. And in the second experiment, the difference is 48. So the temperature difference between the water and the room temperature is smaller then the rate of the cooling is also lower. So 0 0.066. And that was a student suggestion that the rate of the cooling depends on the temperature difference between the water, the initial temperature of the water and the temperature of surrounding. That's why like if we have a hot water, it show a greater change in temperature in 30 seconds or one minute as compared to a cold water. So rate of the cooling depends on Many factors, it depends on size of the container, it depends on initial temperature of the water, it depends on temperature of the surrounding as well. Explain why thermometer scale should be read at a right angle. So why we should uh, read at a right angle, it will prevent, a, avoid, it will prevent the parallax error. Explain why the mixture of hot and cold water should be stirred before taking the temperature reading. Like whenever we are mixing a hot water with cold water, we should stir first. What is the reason for that? So that uh, to obtain an even temperature throughout the mixture, otherwise uh, due to difference in the temperature, the hot water and cold water does not mix instantly. So if you have a hot water, a container is there initially, with a hot water and you add a cold water, it will not mix instantly because they have a difference in temperature, a difference in density. So what you should do? So you should stir the mixture as a result to obtain an even temperature of the mixture. So by this way, we can obtain even temperature of the mixture. So this was Question two from October.
2020 paper 6 variant 1.